condom. No condom, though. Fuck up all drugs. No condom, though. Like, I think, um, you know, I hate to make the comparison because I don't think they're the same. Because I think the 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 one I'm going to mention was more in that mind state. But, like, it's, like, almost like some Tupac shit. You know what I mean? Like, like I think Tupac was more of a revolutionary by all means. Way more than um, 100%. Way but more. I just think, you know, like, he has done things throughout his career. Like, the George Bush doesn't care, care about black people. Like... So where, like, when he does something like this, you know, everyone wants to look at Kanye like he's crazy because he jumps on stage, does this and does that. But, like, for somebody who stood up for certain causes so strong and so hard, like, do you think he's just rejected these thoughts? Personally, I don't. I think he's just on a different wavelength of thinking. And I think it's worth giving him the time of day to share his opinion on what that wavelength is. Because me, personally, I'm on that kind of wavelength where I'm like, everything's energy, yo. Like... We can subscribe to all this other shit and hate each other and separate. And I know I'm not black, so it's hard for me to say that. But it's one of those things where I'm just like, I understand, like, we have to overcome certain separations before we can fight on bigger oppressions. Yeah, you know, it's dope. Like, you brought up Tupac. I want to bring up this. It relates to the whole situation. Okay, a song like, uh, How Do You Want It? Yeah. You know that song, right? Misogynistic as shit. Okay, you listen to the first verse. It's what radio wanted at the time. Until you back out. It's what radio yeah, wanted, yeah. wanted at the time. He starts off that second verse like fucking so political. Like that second verse. If you listen to like uh, the verse on uh, how do you want it, it's not even related to like the hook or anything like that. It was just like he wanted to like have a radio song that was fucking. And then big. you could put some message. And, and, and then the mm-hmm. second verse is so political. See, and that's why though Pac do, people so don't look political. at Pac like the best lyricist of all time in that shit. That's why I respect him a, genius a lot more than most other artists because he was always about that. Like, that's a if you listen to his first two move. albums, they are some of the most political hip-hop yeah. albums you've ever heard. Yeah. Like, Tupacalypse Now is strictly for my N-I-G-G-A-Zs. Yeah. Those albums are so political. Like, they took the notebook after Chuck D, Public Enemy, and ran with it. Like, like with that song, he figured out the formula of, like, what... Well, uh, that's what how, he did. How, he did Thug this, Life, right? How this song would be, like, fucking even the dudes, pushed on a thing. Like, Mo Prem, you know what I mean? People say, like, when Pac even started Thug Life and got yeah. it tattooed on stomach, it wasn't about being a thug. It was about politicizing the streets. You yeah. got to get the streets on your side so you can get them with you like he did two albums being political and the streets weren't really fucking with him he's like all right how do i get the streets riding with me i gotta i gotta be street i gotta be a thug and when the people are rolling with a thug like his whole ideology it was like you know like we can sit here and kill each other but you know it takes a real man to start a revolution and that was his whole ideology like he said very similar things to that in different interviews you know what i mean and Pac, he grew up in that black panther household like he is a product oh, yeah. of yeah. revolution and standing up for what's right. And, you know, that's why I salute Pac so hard, because mm-hmm. in the movements through his whole career, you could see that. You know, even when he was going to leave Death Row after the Machiavelli album, like, did it ever occur on you that maybe he dropped that album under Machiavelli because he was like, yo, I don't even want this attached to my name. Like, I got to put out a certain product for Death Row. But once I put out this one nation that... You know, yeah, that that was a uh, yo the One Nation thing, yo that was a, a fucking. That's one thing no one talks about. Nobody talks about like so he was gonna have a, a bunch of East Coast MCs on, yep, and West Coast MCs and, and unite them. Because Tupac rep both sides, and that's what's amazing yeah. about Pac mm-hmm. that most other artists never had. Is Pac grew up in Baltimore. He was in New York for his early career. Great, great, nice, yeah. like uh. Yeah, yeah, Greg Nice the, the, talks about it. Buckshot talks he, about it. Talks uh, about Smith and Wesson. Buckshot even talks about time like he, he fucking uh, really protect, protected uh, him from Shug when, when like uh, when Shug was saying something about Buckshot and like Tupac was like, "No, that's my boy." Yeah, it's my dude. Yeah. Like Tupac, yo, man, he was. I know people want to like put him in that box. So he's looked at like, oh, Tupac. Like, is that like um, cliche thing, right? But Tupac. Legit, one of the best ever. One of the mm-hmm. best rappers of all time. Yeah, there's a reason why he's at yeah. that spot, and yeah. it's and it's not because he was the illest and, and, lyricist. And, 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 and you know like, what I mean? And I'm a lyricist person. He, he is like the most influential. to me, 
it's just the passion. Like there's, there's nobody else in hip hop. When he on. spoke about social awareness, there was a passion in there that there wasn't in in some of those other songs. You know what I mean? Like when you listen to songs yeah. like Brenda's Got a Baby, you Ooh. listen to songs like fucking like. Even just Who soldier story, that? trapped. Yeah. You know, they got me trapped. Like the way he says it on the second hook, like I wonder why they call you bitch. Even that, like that's like, like his like conscious side when he had to like try to not be conscious. You know what I mean? But yeah. like everything before that, like and people like think about the East Coast, West Coast beef. Like look at Tupac on old school. That whole old school song is about and Brooklyn yeah. and that. Like you it's all about liar. like the early yeah. hip hop. Like it's yeah. like it's like yo, like you had to be like you had Tupac to be there to hip-hop. see that. Like like Tupac embodied hip hop culture and he embodied what it meant full circle. And I think that's the difference between artists like Pac and these dudes we look at like like lyrical because no disrespect to dudes like Eminem and no disrespect to your Jay-Z's and your Nas's even because Nas still gets conscious and political but like no disrespect to any of these dudes but like Tupac Nas probably the closest was one. more about that than he was about being a lyricist you know what yeah. I mean and mm-hmm. I think most other artists who are considered as great are more focused on being a poet like I'm yeah. guilty of it I'd rather be a poet you know and get my message across than like be simple and try to get a message across. See, like, uh, if you look at some of my, my old songs, and, like, uh, they fucking put me in a depressing mode, but, like, really, I was depressed when I wrote some of these songs, but, like, I was such a huge fan of Tupac that, like, I felt like I, I need to put myself out there And, like, that. even the songs by Pac that, like, were just on soundtracks or, like, never got released, like, yeah. they never take me alive, I'm getting high with my 4-5, cocked only suckers, time to die, even as a youngster, causing ruckus on the back mm-hmm. of the bus, I was a fool all through high school, kicking up dust, and now they label me a troublemaker. What, like, I can listen to that any day of the week when I come home from work and just blast down full volume and be like, yo, I'm in yeah, it, like, like I, yeah, as as out on the, bail. As far as the like, lyricist, fucking list like he doesn't get put on there he doesn't get put on the top lyricist but you know what when he really shined his lyricism beat some of the best yeah and like okay it's just uh, he didn't always do it he he rhymed enemies with hennessy a hundred times and he rhymed who had more passion who had more passion in hip-hop than tupac that's a good question hard to say i think that's what makes him so great I, the I, don't think, I don't think anybody had more passion than Tupac. Yeah. Like, how many but people by, are going to have such passion? You know what? The, the closest when they person die. would probably be right? DMX. And you know what? DMX no, was, you know why? I say the closest thing, and this would be um, controversial, but I say Eminem. X. Eminem had a lot of passion. And I think a lot of people overlook sometimes, like in his early in his career, his skill set yeah. for the passion. Like, he could be sarcastic with passion, and he could be emotional with passion and i think a lot of times like because to be honest with you 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 think emma had more passion than dmx (sighs) certain points of careers yeah i was gonna say i almost think so in a way like i think think well in a way he's more dedicated i don't know if passion is really the word but like dmx had that passion but it was limited, you know. What yeah. I, mean? I, don't, I don't think Emma had but more. But see, you almost DMX. respect DMX for like street shit too, though, because you know he was about that. Like, he was really uh, ho- like he didn't give a he didn't give a fuck about like any- what anybody thought. He was just like he was him. But do you know what's crazy? So did Eminem, and he was a scrawny little white boy that couldn't you, defend himself you with know, the you, shit. You saying Eminem didn't care about what other people think? Little I think little, he does little, now. Little now. He does, yeah. now. He does now, but in those days, no. DMX never gave a fuck about what anybody think. Well, you to know, but point, that was... Yeah, but look where that's got him, too. I was just <laughs> going to say that. Yeah. And no disrespect to X, but yeah, yeah. exactly. Look where that gets yeah. you. Like, when people are too scared to approach you and tell you about something, like, you kind of end up... You might end up a crackhead. Like, like he almost didn't care. And, not, like, you know what I mean? He almost didn't care. Like, like to me, DMX... I, 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 yeah. I, 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 DMX, to me, is the saddest story in hip-hop. Like, remember when we went to yeah. Rock the Bells in Jersey? Yeah. And, like... It was sad to see it Yeah, like, Lipinski was pumped, and aside from that, me and Ian walked away after, and we're like, yo, like, that was one of the most disappointing moments as a fan of hip-hop we've ever been through. Like, DMX was on stage, literally, 
just wigging out. Yeah, like you could tell he was either high on crack or withdrawing or like he just all over, like not rapping. Fucking he smacked his head off the speaker. Remember when I called that? Jesus. He hopped off the stage onto the speaker and I'm like, yo, I bet you he'll whack his head on that speaker. Head, Within yeah. fucking 30 seconds, he whacks his head off the fucking speaker above him. Yeah. And he's just like fucking. <gasps> Trying like, to play it off of me. And he you did. But like we seen thing. it because we called it. And I'm well, just, I don't know, just like, yo, like that right there. And that was 2013. And then since then, he's got nothing but worse. Which is the saddest part. Like, right there was one of those moments. It's like, you know when you see Master Ace lose that battle? Who did he lose the battle to? Um, Who was that dude who, like, made one song? No, it wasn't Mr. Fab. It was that guy who made, like, one song. Juice? Was it Juice? No, because that's the dude Eminem lost to. Who's the dude? Oh, fucking... Master Ace lost, so he rolled up and had written verses, and this guy just go, smoked him. Go ghost something? Ghost? Boogeyman. 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 Yes. The Boogeyman. When I was a kid, scary. Too fairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah Boogeyman. If you ever watch that Master Ace battle with Boogeyman, you look at Master Ace as like one of the best MCs of all time. You see him in this battle, and you're like, wow. Like, it hurts your soul. It's like when you've seen Cannabis against mm-hmm. uh, Disaster. It's one of those things that just, yeah, like, as a like, hip-hop wow. fan, as it hurts been, yeah. your soul. And that's exactly, like, what DMX... Even in 2013, when we seen him live, like it hurt us. We were yeah. like, "Whoa!" Yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. I want to bring it back to Tupac. Yeah, you know, think about okay, he was 25, which is crazy when he got killed. Yeah, he he had five platinum albums and five movies out. Did he have five platinum albums at that point though? Yeah, like before he died. Yeah. Because All Eyes on Me was platinum. Maybe Me Against the World, but I don't think fucking Thug Life or Tupacalypse or Yo, Strictly. I, yeah, yeah, I see anything. All those albums. They're platinum prior to death. Prior to death. Really? Because I was going to say, I could see them being made prior to death and then becoming platinum. Becoming but platinum then, like, after. But, but then, like, having all, 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 all the movies as well. Let's ask a question. What do you think Tupac's best album is? Because a lot of people think All Eyes on Me. I say Me Against the World. That's a good album. My personal opinion is Tupacalypse Now. Okay. See, I probably would. I'll be the traditional to say All Eyes on Me. Yeah? All Eyes on Me is a It's like It is. It's a well-rounded, polished album. But Tupacalypse Now... Me Against the World and then All Eyes on Me. To me, the thing is... Me Against the World's a great album, too. But to me, Tupacalypse Now... Though it doesn't have the catchiest songs and the best beats. Do you know what it is? It's a solid it's block so raw. of raw it's so politicism. Raw. Like it, it, it is no condom podcast before the no It's like album. it's yeah. it's basically the closest yeah. thing you get to public enemies and fear um fear of a black planet. Or no, yeah. sorry, not fear of a black planet. Um fuck, what's the one before it? Takes a you're takes right, a nation of millions right. to hold us yeah, back. Yeah, it's like the closest thing you get to that. Like songs like Violent, songs like Soldier Story. Even if my homie calls us dope, but then Brenda's got a baby is hands down. And I don't even know if any real hip hop head could disagree. Top ten best hip hop yeah. songs. Of like all time. I know non hip hop heads. Brenda's like got a baby. Song. Yeah, like, I'm a that, that don't song. Listen to rap that listen to that song. What can you do with Brenda's got a baby? Like that is so powerful. And keep then your head up, keep your head up too. But that was on Strictly. Yeah, yeah that was Strictly. Um, strictly, strictly which is dope too. Yeah, you know, because I like Soldier's Revenge with the fucking uh, big payback sample by James Brown and my message to the censorship committee: Who's the biggest gang is in the city? city yeah, critics yeah. of the ca- don't look so shook, confused, take a big. Oh uh, yeah, like that's just crazy. But like, just the, like, like the first album is a mix of Public Enemy. And NWA will fuck the police. Like that is those two mentalities, but it's coming from a dude who grew up in the Black fan- pa- Panther. Yeah. Um, like I almost feel like, uh, like I I almost say like me against the world because like I think like when I look at albums, it's well rounded. It's I, good. When I look at albums, like it's I, really I, good. I, I need to like old look, school is one of Pac's best songs. I, I, if I'm yeah, like I, if I'm song. on my fucking like I'm like I don't know what the fuck's going on in my life and shit like that. Like, uh, there's Me Against the World, and there's Scarface, The Fix. The Fix is so Th- fire. Those two albums, to me, like, will help me put my life back in perspective. 
See, you know what, man? I'll, like, I'll listen to those two, and I'll be like, I'll be like, okay, like fucking. You know? See, like I got like levels to it, right? Like I got levels where I respect hip hop as hip hop, and I'm like, yo, and it just like gets me. But then I got levels where I respect hip hop where it personally connects, yes. and I'm like, yo, this like saved my life. And as cliche as it is, man, like Eminem's one of those dudes who saved my life. Like Scarface like, saved my life. Like yeah, see, like I I listen to Fix and I love it. I think it's in the top 20 grade like i love that album yeah but i can't say that that album ever saved my life like i listened to that yeah which is crazy to me me, but that's cool but like that like i listened to in different points of my life and chapters like there's there's eminem songs like rock bottom and if i had like those songs different rock rock bottom is like uh, those two songs literally stopped me from killing myself at points in my early childhood you know what i mean like there's shit like that where like and that's why like, I regard certain artists, I think, at a certain level, even when they don't deliver. You know, like you, Eminem, yeah, you, I always give him respect, but I'm like, yeah, you been, you fell off. Yeah, you were saying that, like, uh, I don't know. I never really want to get this deep on the podcast, but, like, uh, you said, like, that album kind of, like, helped save your life. And, like, uh, you know, one thing, like, I, I've thought of over time is, like, uh, I, I've thought about ending it all at, at some point. But I, I had a friend that I grew up with, Jesse Shaw. He he ended his own life, and like me and him were best friends. Yeah. Me and me and him were best friends. Like when we were growing up, he, like, when I moved to Brantford, he was the first guy that I met because um, his parent, his mom was friends with my mom. It's big when someone around you. So takes then, like, life. but then, like, I, I seen like the. Um, I, I don't want to say this to anybody that's not think about this shit. Like, I I, I seen the effects that it, yeah. that that um, it had on me. It had on his mom. It had on all our friends around us. A lot yeah. of people. For and I sure. seen the effects, and like that's like one reason why when I was in my deepest depression, I didn't take my life. See, because the, because I, I seen the effects that did. The people around you. The thing is, I didn't oh, even yeah, had yeah. that around me. Yeah. So like, but one, one like of my best you know, friends, my like, song Cans- yo, "Castles in the Sand." Yo, like one of the, that's all about my uncle yeah, committing suicide. Like my, it's that same thing. Like, my, like uh. Back when I first started getting into hip hop, I wasn't all into like West Coast shit. Yeah. I was into like Snoop. I was into Tupac. I was into Dre. He was the guy that got me into this. Like this probably like he probably loved being here right now. Cause, yeah. Because he was like, oh, you listen to all the, you know, you need to listen to Nas. You need to listen to Biggie. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. you need to listen to Gangstar. He, he, the East Coast. Like back in the day, like, <laughs> like you know how it was like you burn CDs. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like yeah. he would go on like uh, he'd go on these sites and like burn me a mix, a Gangstar mix. That's hell. He like he, he listen to this. He'd, Those were the illest he, homies he, back then. He'd, right? he, he'd burn me a Nas mix. Like he'd yeah. like he like yeah. So like uh, that's like anybody that's thinking about that shit. Like think about how it affects the people around you. Cause like but yeah, it, it, it still affects me to this day. Like uh, like I, I still think about like yo, this is like fucking one of my best friends ever. That put me onto a lot of shit. So like see and like, that being said, like I yo, agree, man. Like it's crazy, like. To me, I went through so many depressing spouts when I was a kid from d- for different reasons, you know, and I wanted to end it. And um, it didn't take until I was in my 20s. And my uncle, who I loved, Kim, who uh, Castles in the Sand is about, he took it. And I was like, whoa. Either way, no kind of podcast. We out. They cut you off. Uh, that's oh. cool. Uh,